Here in the One Yard Revolution Garden, we grow year-round for a continuous harvest in Zone 5. In summer, we have about 600 square feet of growing space, and in winter, 200 square feet. To give you a better idea of how much time it takes to maintain our garden, I'm releasing four videos, one for each season, that document in detail how much time I spend in the garden over the course of seven days. In late June, I released the summer edition of this series, and today's video is the autumn edition. In the summer edition of this series, I found that I worked only a little bit more than 57 minutes over the course of seven days. Though there's a lot growing in summer, there's not all that much work to do, other than harvesting, watering, and occasionally succession planting. The busiest times are when the garden is in transition, namely spring and autumn. Planting and preparing for summer makes spring the busiest season, but autumn is pretty busy too, as we clean up the remains of the summer garden and prepare to grow in colder weather. In today's video, I'll show you all of the work I did over a seven day period, October 30th through November 5th. The work will be shown at 10 times speed and there'll be a running total in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Let's go back to last Sunday to get started. The first thing I'll do today is to start preparing the low tunnels inside the hoop house for the colder weather. It's still too warm to cover the low tunnels, so all I'll do today is put the plastic in place and secure it to the outside perimeter of the hoop house. I start by draping 6 mil greenhouse film over the two low tunnels. This film from Greenhouse Megastore is guaranteed to last 4 years, but will likely last much longer because we remove it and store it inside over the summer when much of the damage to the plastic would otherwise occur. Next I secure the low tunnel plastic along the outside perimeter of the raised bed by pinching it under 1 by 2 furring strips and then I fasten the strips to the top of the raised bed with 1 and a quarter inch roofing nails. The furring strips will remain in place until the spring. After finishing with the low tunnel on the south side of the hoop house, I move to the low tunnel that's on the east side. As before, I secure the plastic to the raised bed using 1 by 2 furring strips and 1 and a quarter inch roofing nails. The single layer of protection will be enough to keep our cold hardy plants going strong until temperatures are regularly below freezing. At that point, probably in December, I'll also cover the hoop house with 6 mil greenhouse film. With two layers of protection, we'll harvest many of our cold hardy crops well into the winter and some all the way until spring. Finally, because it's still too warm to cover the low tunnels, I fold back the plastic for now. According to our extended forecast, we'll have our first freeze in mid-November, so we'll likely cover the tunnels for the first time next Saturday. Having this part of the job already complete, we'll avoid a mad rush to get things done next weekend. Okay, now I'm ready to cover the low tunnels when it gets cold. Next, I'll do some harvesting. Like last year, we're still harvesting summer crops in November in Chicago which is almost as rare as a Cubs World Series championship. Here I'm harvesting cherry tomatoes on October 30th for a simple pasta dish. Though we grew a number of large varieties this year, only one has survived into November, while many of our cherry tomatoes have. Sweet Millions and Organic Sweeties have done particularly well. And Sweet Millions aren't only one of our favorite tasting cherry tomatoes, they also consistently produce the highest yields. As I wrap up the harvest, the total work time for Sunday and the week comes to just 23 minutes. Well that's all I have planned for Sunday. During the week I'll likely just do some more harvesting and maybe a little garden cleanup. And I'll have some larger projects to do next Saturday. I ended up not doing any work at all in the garden yesterday. But today a neighbor gave me four bags of leaves. It took me five minutes and 42 seconds to get the leaves from their yard to ours. So let's add that to our clock. And now I'm going to take the leaves and mulch our garden beds with them. Nothing makes soil light and fluffy like leaves. I've been mulching with leaves since I was a kid, helping my father prepare the family garden for winter. The leaves provide a warm blanket and food source for earthworms, and they slowly release nutrients into the soil and reduce erosion. The white grids you see are there to prevent squirrels from digging up garlic. Covering the garlic with leaves will ensure it survives the winter, especially the less cold hardy California soft neck garlic. Even though we don't shred the leaves, they're usually devoured by earthworms by early June. In the spring, I'll temporarily brush the leaves aside to plant intensively planted crops like carrots and beets. 
and it'll create openings in the leaves to transplant tomatoes and peppers. Though some people worry about leaves attracting slugs, we've seen a steady reduction in our slug population over the years, despite heavy mulching. The mulch provides an excellent habitat for slug predators like ground beetles and centipedes, and I'm convinced they're responsible for keeping our slug population in check. Another concern many people have is that leaves, especially oak leaves, will make the soil acidic. But this is a myth, and oak leaves can be used in the garden without concern. As I wrap up my garden work for Tuesday, my running total for the week is 40 minutes and 30 seconds. It's Wednesday now, and I'm out just before dinner to pick beans for one of our dishes. One of my wife's many contributions to the garden this year was Trianfo Violetto pole beans. She bought the seeds after the garden had already been planned and planted, so it was a challenge to find a space for them. We decided to grow them up the hoops of our hoop house, even though we weren't sure if they'd get enough sun there. Much to our surprise, the beans were more productive than any pole bean we've ever grown, and weeks after our Kentucky pole beans and scarlet runner beans were done for the year, our Trianfo Violetto beans are still producing, even into early November. After harvesting the beans, my running total for the week is up to 47 minutes and 14 seconds. It's Thursday evening, and this has turned out to be a great week for collecting leaves from my neighbors. I've got five bags just waiting for me out in the alley. All I have to do is go pick them up. I already mulched our garden beds, so I'll save these leaves to use later as mulch or in compost. From Sunday through Thursday, I've now worked 48 minutes and 45 seconds in the garden. Well, that's all I'm going to do today. I'll see you tomorrow in the garden. It's now Friday, and I decided to get a head start on Saturday's project by cutting the plastic for the inner hoops of my two new hinged low tunnels. I drape the plastic over an inner hoop to determine where to cut the plastic, and then I make the cut. I spread the plastic over the hoops to make sure it covers the low tunnel properly. I secured the plastic with spring clamps and fold it back because it's still too warm to keep the tunnel covered. I then move on to the second low tunnel where I repeat the same procedure. Tomorrow I'll come back and secure one side of each low tunnel with furring strips, just like I did with the low tunnels in the hoop house. And next Saturday, I'll finish securing the plastic to the inner hoops in anticipation of freezing temperatures the following week. I'll cover the outer hoops of the low tunnels when temperatures are regularly below freezing, probably in December. And I'll publish a complete how-to video on how I made these hinged low tunnels after the complete. After completing my work on Friday, my running total is up to 1 hour, 1 minute, and 11 seconds. It's Saturday morning, and I'm going to get the day started by tacking down the plastic for the inner hoops on just one side of this low tunnel. That'll give me a head start for next week when I cover the inner loops completely with plastic. Let's get started. The 1x2 furring strips I'm using to tack down the plastic come in 8 foot lengths but that's a bit too long. So I lay the furring strip in place, mark where it needs to be cut, and cut it with a handsaw. I then move the plastic out of the way, lay the furring strip down, and secure the plastic to the top of the raised bed by driving one and a quarter inch roofing nails through the furring strip and plastic and into the raised bed. After making sure the plastic properly covers the low tunnel, I pull it back because it's much too warm to cover these cool weather crops right now. I then move on to the second low tunnel. I cut the furring strip to length, pull the plastic over the top of the low tunnel so it won't be in the way and secure the plastic as before by driving roofing nails through the furring strips and plastic into the top of the raised bed. I then uncover the low tunnel and put away my tools and supplies. Next, I grab a couple collard green plants we have growing in a grow bag and bring them to the hoop house. There's an area in the hoop house that has lots of volunteer parsley 
but not much else. So I decided to transplant the collard greens there. While off camera, I remove the plants from the grow bag and separate their roots. Then I return and plant the two collard greens in the raised bed. Before going back in the house, I pick some Swiss chard and a jalapeno pepper to make scrambled eggs with greens. I'm off camera for a minute while I go to the front yard to pick the pepper. After eating breakfast, I return to the garden to plant elephant garlic. I hadn't planned on planting it this year, but my wife had other plans. I'm planting it in a cold frame for a little extra protection from the cold this winter. I plant the elephant garlic pointy side up in holes about four to six inches deep and eight inches apart. I then grab a bag of leaves and mulch the elephant garlic for even more protection from the cold this winter. I won't cover the cold frame with its glass top until mid to late December. Next, I water the collard greens I planted earlier and tidy up the garden a bit. I remove a couple conduit stakes that are no longer being used. And to finish my work for the day, I hook up the garden hose to water the greens in the raised bed on our compost bin. We've had quite a bit of rain lately, but these plants were covered with a glass top during much of the rain, so they could definitely use a drink. After putting the garden hose away, my work is complete, and the total amount of time I've spent working the garden for the past seven days is only one hour, 36 minutes, and 10 seconds. I hope this series gives you a better idea of how much time we spend working in the garden using the methods I describe in my videos. I'll be back for the next installment in this series, this winter. One hour, 36 minutes is not a lot of time to spend working in the garden over seven days. And there's a good chance I'll track even less time in the winter installment of this series. My hope is that showing how little time it takes to grow food on this scale will encourage more people to start their own gardens and grow more of their own food. If you found this video helpful, please give it a oh thumbs up. And if you haven't oh already, goodness. please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on little land without spending much or working harder than you have to. You're a crazy cat.